This lecture begins our new unit on chronic and life-threatening illnesses. Chronic and life-threatening illnesses are incredibly common and are a part of life for millions of Americans. Uh, chronic and life-threatening illnesses are probably obviously defined as illnesses that are either chronic or ongoing. They're differentiated from acute illnesses that typically can be treated with full recovery and uh, they're sort of gone past part of history. Chronic illnesses are typically those that individuals live with throughout a lifetime. Uh, the symptoms may wax and wane over time. Some diseases are more progressive, meaning they get worse over time, but they tend to be there pretty much a part of daily life. And of course, life-threatening illnesses, uh, self-explanatory, are those that uh, threaten uh, the uh, life of the individual. There's lots of different types of chronic or life-threatening illnesses. Some of the more common ones are listed on this slide. Uh, things like asthma, uh, rheumatoid and other autoimmune diseases, uh, certainly cancers. Uh, cancer is an interesting one because uh, it sort of straddles the definition of chronic versus life-threatening. Uh, many cancers today are survivable for many, many years, and so we think of them more as uh, chronic illnesses almost and not so much life-threatening acute illnesses like we thought of them 30, 40, 50 years ago. Uh, our next lecture will focus on cancer. Uh, some infectious diseases can be considered chronic, uh, things like uh, living with uh, HIV or hepatitis, uh, diabetes and heart disease, too, we will focus on in this particular um, uh, unit. Uh, can include disabling injuries, things like a spinal cord injury that may lead to disability, other sorts of chronic uh, problems. Um, traumatic head injuries um, would be in this category as well. And we can also think of uh, cognitive disruptions, things like brain injuries or Alzheimer's, dementias, other sorts of things that may be uh, long-standing um, uh, chronic disabilities. Now, as I mentioned in the previous slide, um, chronic uh, conditions are incredibly common. If you look at this slide here that looks at the number of chronic conditions uh, suffered by Americans, if you add up each of these bars, you get to nearly half of Americans suffer with one or more um, chronic conditions. You notice there's a good number here, uh, let's see, about 25% that have more than one chronic condition. And uh, there's even 3% um, of Americans have five or more what we would consider chronic illnesses. As I mentioned in the previous slide, in 2014, almost half of all Americans, or nearly 150 million people, live with at least one chronic condition. About half of those folks have one diagnosable chronic condition. And so about a quarter of Americans live with more than one. Now, people with uh, uh, multiple chronic conditions, what we call multi-morbidity, account for a huge chunk of our health care spending. About 83% of health care spending um, are accounted for by those with chronic conditions. Those with five or more chronic conditions have an average of almost 15 physician visits and fill over 50 prescriptions per year. So, so chronic illnesses are not only a big issue because the numbers who have them, but they're a big issue because they create a huge strain on our healthcare system. Um, our next unit will cover the healthcare system and we'll take a little bit of a closer look at what an impact these kind of conditions have and, and it'll really raise um, your awareness of why we need to find um, efficient and effective ways to address these kinds of issues. If we look at the um, uh, prevalence of these sorts of chronic conditions across the globe, what we see is that over time, chronic conditions are growing in their prevalence. On this figure on the left from 1990 um, to project it out to 2020, you see an almost doubling of people living with chronic conditions. Now that's partly due to the success that we are, have had and continue to have against other sorts of things like infectious communicable diseases and injuries. You notice in the figure on the right a significant decline in um, uh, uh, deaths due to injuries or communicable diseases from 1990 projected through 2020. A uh, big part of that, by the way, is automobile safety. Um, people are surviving automobile accidents and preventing accidents at much higher rates uh, than, we, than we used to, and so that's cutting that down. But as we reduce the rates of deaths from accidents or infectious diseases, chronic conditions become more possible. Partly this is due to the increase in life expectancy. The longer people live, the better chance there is for a chronic condition to occur.
We also know that changes in our environments and the availability of food and good food, the lack of physical activity um, is also a part of this picture as well. But something definitely we need to be um, aware of because this is the, the big future challenge for our, our country and our healthcare system. Uh, this little uh, animated uh, GIF here will show you uh, the way that diabetes spreads throughout the U.S. Um, uh, from beginning in, um, oh, where does it start here, 1990 or so, uh, excuse me, 2004 uh, through uh, um, 2009. And look at how uh, diabetes is just sort of exploding, particularly in the American Southeast. Um, including Oklahoma. Notice Oklahoma there, how the diabetes prevalence is increasing. You hear people talk about why we have sort of an epidemic of diabetes, and this is why, because we're seeing it growing at faster and faster rates, and if we don't get a handle on this, it's just going to overwhelm um, our healthcare system. Uh, this figure is similar, but shows deaths due to diability, due to diabetes. This is a much longer time window on here from beginning um, well, I think 1979 uh, through 2011. And what you see again is increasing, particularly in the American Southeast, um, deaths due to, death due to diabetes um, uh, really on the increase. And uh, again, this is a big uh, concern that we need to get a handle on. So when we look at the psychological aspects of chronic illness, which is really the focus of this topic in our course, there's five different things that we can look at. Uh, one is we can look at the psychological risk factors for chronic illness, and that includes not just uh, thoughts and emotions, but behaviors. Uh, to some extent, we addressed that in our previous unit, looking at things like um, uh, health behaviors, uh, diet, exercise, preventive behaviors, uh, those sorts of issues. We can also look at the psychological impact of illness, how people adjust and cope to the presence of a chronic or life-threatening illness. We'll focus a lot on that in this unit. We may look at psychological aspects of treatment and managing illness. How do people go about approaching treatment, adhering to treatment, managing uh, the waxing and waning of their symptoms? We could also look at the psychological aspects of the outcomes, how people cope with disability uh, or even death or death approaching. And lastly, we can look at how we might intervene, psychological interventions for chronic illness. What could we do from a psychological standpoint to help people who are coping with a chronic illness or living with a chronic illness uh, to live um, as fully as possible? So that completes our introduction into our new unit on uh, chronic illnesses.